think I really was, uh, you know, born a little bit too late, but I'm sort of a California plein air impressionist painter. Uh, and I would have loved working with them, and that's really what most of my work is focused on. So I do a lot of work on uh, the, the coast, and then also on the eastern Sierras and the, the desert areas. And I like the dramatic contrast of the landscape there. You have the high Sierras uh, and the streams, meadows, and then you go down and you have the, the vast expanses of the desert. And I really uh, like areas all from Ridgecrest North, uh, probably up to Tioga Pass. So, I mean, Rock Creek, McGee Creek are some of my favorites, Alabama Hills, Whitney Portal, and uh, even areas like La Mancha. Uh, you can take a very simple area that looks like nothing in the desert and turn it into a beautiful painting. I did a lot of work in watercolor and then did some work in oil uh, and plein air painting outdoors. But recently I've been doing more work in pastel, and I think I like that because I can combine both the painting medium and the drawing medium. And I will often do a watercolor underpainting on a pastel and then start doing pastel on top of it. Then partway through I'll use an alcohol wash to fix some of the pastel into the sanded surface of the paper. And then you're able to keep working on the pastel. And I like pastel because it's the most direct application of pigment to the paper with uh, no interference from water diluting it or oil or terpenoid. So you can really achieve the most vivid color. And I think because I draw well that uh, I, I like the pastel rather than just straight painting. My father was an architect and uh, so he would take me out on weekends sketching with him. And I think I probably inherited his hand-eye coordination and uh, being able to render things the way I see them. Uh, I went to uh, Mills College for my undergraduate work in Oakland, California, uh, and they gave me a scholarship because uh, I was a National Merit Scholar, uh, so I'm not just an artist. <laughs> and then uh, I, uh, after completing college, I, uh, my father said to me, uh, how are you going to earn a living now, <laughs> which was a, a new idea. And I ended up uh, deciding I would be a teacher because I thought I was a little more uh, shy or quiet at that time. And uh, I went to UCLA for my teaching credential. And after getting that, my training teacher, uh, when I was a student teacher at University High School in West Los Angeles, recommended me to take her position. Uh, so I was hired at University High and became department chairman. And. Uh, taught there for 34 years. So we had a very fine department of five teachers, uh, and that was when the arts were more funded by the state of California than they are now. And I would say in college, I had a lot of excellent teachers, but they were more interested in uh, teaching you about art rather than how to do it or being practical. And I was there at the time when conceptual art was just coming in, and so a lot of it was more thought ideas about art rather than how do you actually create a watercolor or what are the specifics of watercolor or pastel. And it was not until I started taking workshops after I graduated that I really learned how to manipulate mediums and really control them. And I had some good workshops from uh, Tom Lynch, Tony Couch, uh, Richard McKinley, and those all inspired me. So when I'm starting a work, uh, I like to take several reference photos. Now, if you look at my work on the Rademacher Hills, uh, my reference photos were taken at sunset as we're heading back in the Jeep. And uh, I take multiple photos so I can sort of pick what composition I like. And then I may do several thumbnail sketches to try out different compositions, uh, maybe even different formats. I like to work from multiple reference photos and maybe take hills from one and then use an entry into the canvas or the, the painting. Uh, I usually like a, an S curve or a Z curve to lead the viewer's eye in, and I'll often have a dark value area in the foreground to give dimension to the picture and to help the viewer go back into it. And then uh, you can see in my steps on working on the, the Rademacher Hills, how the picture slowly changes, and I 
begin with the darker values and then add the lighter values into the image. So in the pastels, I end up layering uh, the lighter colors in at the end and then adjusting the values and the colors. And you have to, as an artist, remember that you're not just duplicating the scene you're seeing, but what makes the picture work? What do you want to eliminate? What do you want to move around? Uh, what colors do you want to emphasize? So plein air painting can be a real hassle, and it's really the, it's the fancy French term for outdoor painting. And uh, you know, you have to have your sunscreen, you've got to have an umbrella, uh, the light on your canvas may be different than when you're in the studio. If it's windy, you've got to have a sack of rocks to help hold the easel down. And uh, there's a lot of hassle to it, but it gives you much more excitement and uh, I think a vivid experience of the seeing your painting than uh, just doing all studio work from photographs. Because the photographs tend to flatten the picture and they tend to give what's called a cold eye or a blue eye because it, they emphasize the, the cools in the picture better and all of your detail in the shadows uh, disappears. So working in plein air is always uh, good for an artist. And uh, I do probably try to do about half and half. Uh, you know, as I get older and want to get less sunburned, and then some studio work is pretty nice. But uh, it's always nice to get outdoors, especially in the, the Sierras and 